better than I was expecting here because the Maserati has not really fallen into the clutches of Tom Ackery's Aston Martin yet. It may happen before the end. 11 more minutes are on the clock. Frank Keckler comes up towards the bus stop now, but Thomas Much standing his ground. And we've got a drive-through penalty for car eight speeding in the pit lane. Uh, which is Stefan Mucker at the wheel, and I suspect that was on his departure because we saw that problem with the wheel now. It was pretty far up, wasn't it? So on his way out, he may well have been speeding them. Yeah, because what you normally have on the on the steering wheel is a button which actually controls your speed. Now, obviously, if you you know, sometimes there's sort of a hold, a push and a hold, mm. or it's sort of a click on and a click off. And if you knock it, if it's a click on and a click off, and then cause your speed and uh, lose out. So he's in uh, 14th place, but he's obviously going to lose it a lot more time now. Look at this for the race lead, they could barely be closer, coming up right on now. Thomas Murch is still, but only just ahead of Frank Keckler. Michael Krohn dropping back a little bit in third place, and then look for fifth, we have them overlapping as well. Akari and Muller, Aston Martin and Maserati. The Lamborghini, though, in second place, virtually hidden behind the Ford as they dive towards Le Combe this time, on board now with Alex Muller. Is he going to be able to gain a place because Tom Ackery's Aston Martin is nearby, probably alongside he him. He's gone oh, he through. Has, yeah, he went through. He, got, he went through a ruse uh, wonderfully well, pulled out very, very early, and that gave him a chance. Give him a big fight in that car as well. So this is where the tyre temperatures are just coming into uh, into their own. But the cars get a little bit nervous because they're not quite giving the grip that the driver needs. One of the beauties of this length of lap is you can see where each car is strong, can't you? And how now the Nissan has closed back up again, having said a couple of corners back that Krum was falling, uh, sorry, Peter Dumbrecht's car was falling away. Now it is back uh, into contention once again for a race win here. Eight and a half minutes of the race to go. They all bunch up at the bus stop. Remember the best that Peter Dumbrecht and Mikhail Krum have had this year as a finish. Second in the championship race at Paul Ricard. Third at the moment out of the bus stop and look at the lead battle ahead they're going to be overlapping at the source Frank Keckler on the outside of the Lamborghini can he drive all the way around the outside of Thomas Much? no he can't bit of blue smoke though as Much locks up and now Keckler tries to storm up the inside what a race absolutely yeah and I apologise to Peter Peter Dunbrack kept saying it was Michael Grimm in the car but Peter's doing a, a sterling job and hopefully he can capitalise on the battle that's in front of him and through this Rouge corner this is where he needs to get that real drag up this Kemmel straight but we've had that change for the lead yep. Of course, and so now Frank Keckler has done it and gone through. Thomas Much down in second place. And look at the two Maseratis for fourth because now uh, on the tail of Miguel Ramos is Alex Muller. So he's got ahead of Akari, his Muller, and now he wants to get past Miguel Ramos as well. He's going to do it on the inside, and all of a sudden that fourth place Maserati is another potential winning car. Absolutely. He's been very quick. The last, what, two laps, he's passed two cars and seems to have a very good pace at the moment. So now he's really going to be on it and try and get uh, past him. So there we go, into the source. Ran a little bit wide, I think, yes, and the Aston Martin, uh, the, Mar the Lamborghini slips down the inside quite easily. Inside, already passing quite easily before we even got down to down to the bottom, so uh, very good job there. Now it's going to be consistent, they're very, <laughs> very happy. Up the inside comes Muller, then the Maserati terrorising the Nissan, he can't do it, has to back out of it. Second, third and fourth, absolutely together, but while they're being held up by Thomas Much like this, so the leader, Frank Keckler, who was second yesterday in the qualification race, is building a good lead. Six more minutes of the race to go, and he leads by 1.6 seconds. Yeah, and we're, fi and we're finding that GT40 is struggling a little bit. I think, yeah, the first couple of laps he was OK. Uh, we're on board now with the, uh, the Muller Maserati and this is where he's been very good down this hill through a rouge and I think it's going to be fascinating to see if he can get that drag up the hill down that Kevin straight and being able to pass as they go into the coup. and I think he might be uh, quick enough to be able to get past that Nissan we'll see so that's the race leader then, the Lamborghini of Writer Engineering, Frank Keckler, the driver, yeah. and Muller is alongside Dumbrack, and they both want to get past the Ford. Peter stands his ground on the inside, though. Lovely, and he's got the slipstream of the GT40 as well, So, but the Nissan is still... No, the Nissan's kept it. Fantastic racing. Peter Dumbrack then turns into Le Combe. He's still in third place. Where's Alex Muller? He's right on his tail. And Thomas Much, of course, gains an advantage because Peter Dumbrack, so busy defending, loses a couple of lengths. Now, possibly, there's a challenge. Yes, has Much got a problem because Dumbrack easily goes to the outside of him. He's going to swoop through on the approach to Paul. Yes, Peter Dumbrack goes second at long last he's done it and much goes a bit wide does he going into the corner Alex Muller has a gap on the inside the Maserati goes through into third place yeah, he's got a problem there for some reason because he slowed up uh, as they went towards Pua uh, and then ran very wide also so uh, so he's lost two places there well he is dropping away actually yeah. he's slowing up yeah he's slowing up but he's not yet lost another place has he he's still not yet Ramos behind him yet for the yet. moment but that could all change yeah. I think it will happen at the next breaking point if not before so we're coming up, this is the, coming up to Blanchiment. This is sort of the little left kink beforehand, and then Blanchiment itself, mighty corner. 
Well, we'll see, and Osif seems to be okay, and see, he's gone a bit wide again. But he's going to be close enough, and that is not going to be able to slip up the inside on that occasion. And Miguel Ramos is one of the quick gentleman racers that's still around in uh, top-level GT racing, so whether he's quite as gung-ho as Enrique Bernaldi, who started the car, or rather doubt across the line they come. The gap between the leaders, 2.6 seconds now, with three and a half minutes to go. Is that too much for Peter Dumbreck to make up? He locks up, going into La Source as well there. Much still hanging on to his place ahead on Miguel Ramos. Just thinking though about Alex Muller's car, the Maserati MC12 is in third place. Now yesterday in the qualification race, it started last on the grid. So that goes to show how things have worked out over the qualification race with a good result, a good drive in this race, the safety car as well. But what an effort by Alfred Hager and Alex Muller. Absolutely. Again, they've had a little bit of luck maybe with that pace car, but it, it was the same for everybody. The only guy who lost out, I suppose, was the leaders, because they were the ones who had, did have a lead. But uh, it's made the race better, but he's actually stepped up. He's, uh, he's, his pace has been wonderful bit of smoke, bit of locking up, someone's gone wide there. That was the Definitely second place battle, gone, yeah. wasn't it? It was either Dumbreck or Muller, let's see who survives. The leader Dumbreck. goes through, Keckler. And what's happening yes, for second was. place? Yeah, it was Peter yeah. yeah, he's not there at all. There was a lot of smoke, so... Yeah, oh yes. It's uh, a mechanical a problem. Smoke. Uh, mechanic, slightly mechanical, coming 